Hey folks, Quillateen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Make a Base Building Game in Unity. In the last episode, we were sort of derping around with some file saving. Uh, we are trying to get file saving and loading to work, and we're not quite happy with uh, how I was leaving things last episode. Also, they weren't quite working, is part of it. But also, I think we can clean this up pretty substantially. Um, I have decided one thing. Uh, is I don't like having these split up like this. It starts to be a little unclear about what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this first of all to reader dot uh, read attribute value of width. Oh no. Dot get attribute called width, and we're going to wrap that inside of an int dot int dot parse. And obviously this could throw exceptions, but the last version could as well. So, and we're not checking for that right now. But what this means is we're going to be able to um, just clean up some of this stuff a little bit and, and minimize some of that. So then we get the width and the height. We set up the world based on that. Excellent. Um, actually, set up world probably sets width and height there, but that's, that's fine. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, I mean, descending within the content is fine. Um, we could also just set this up with a reader.read loop, but I'm not sure if that's the win. Actually, it might not be a bad idea to, to split this up. We could minimize the complexity of this code a little bit. You know what? Hold on. Maybe we will do that. So here's what I'm talking about. We're going to set up a while loop here for reader.read. So this is going to read through the entire XML file one node at the time. And then we're going to, I don't know, put in a switch for reader.name, which is going to be name this node. And if it's equal to tiles, then what we're going to do, uh, this, sorry, reader.name like that. Um, and then we're going to say case tiles. So if we're in a tiles node, then we're going to just call another function, which is going to read XML underscore tiles. And we're going to pass it the reader. I'm going to make a function down here, which needs an XML reader called reader. And then we can take this nonsense and pop it down there. Yeah, and we were still breaking. That's maybe why it wasn't working last time, I just realized. I still had that break that was ending early, so it was only ever reading one tile. Okay, anyway, I think I'm still going to like this better. So if we go down the node and we hit tiles, then we're going to call this other function. And this function is going to, um, is also going to loop like this. It's going to do a while loop where it's going to read tiles, um, actually, and instead of doing a switch, we're just going to say if reader.name not equals tile. If we're not looking at a tile, then we are done. Return. We are out of tiles. But other than that, we're going to be looking at a tile element, which may or may not have stuff within it, but we don't necessarily care about that. We are going to grab the x and y coordinates, same as before. Um, although, again, what I'm going to do is make it more like this. Int parse, if we have capital X, and the same thing. Y, Y, we just need to get that so that we know what tile we are working on. And then we're going to tell the tile to read its XML. And that's that. Much more minimal code way easier to read. Uh, we are in the tiles element. So read elements until we run out of tile uh, nodes. I mean, node element, sort of interchangeable, whatever. Let's pretend that it is. Um, uh, oh, don't move to attribute. Don't do that at all. Get rid of that. And that can be a lowercase y. There we go. So we advance the stream to read. We parse, we get the attributes from this. And then we tell the tiles to read that. And uh, we do all these moves. But again, I'm going to get rid of that stuff. Because I think that it is way just harder to read. And this should be fine. Grab the x. 
Uh, yeah, actually, I can put in the extra line. That's fine. Whatever. The Y. We're actually setting it here. Because at this point, we've created an empty tile. There must be a tile... Where's our tile constructor? Do we not have a constructor? Do we just have an implicit one? No, we've got it here. Right, we've technically already created... Ooh. Yeah, we've already created the tiles. So we actually don't have to set the X and Y. Because the X and Y... The tiles have already been co uh, created. They've already got their X and Y coordinates. So setting it again makes literally no sense. It should actually be set as a read-only. Um, so the only thing we care about is setting... Our type which is going to be this we're going to parse the integer from this because when we read the type attribute it's just a string a single well right now a single character string which has the character zero or the character one we're gonna parse it into an integer again this could throw um, uh, an exception but we're gonna just hope that it doesn't right now and we'll see what we want to do with this later on to be more robust and then we're gonna cast it to a tile type and that's literally all this needs to do because this shouldn't have any tile stuff or any child stuff within it right now it's just an empty tag one hopes for sure probably this works i don't know can all cannot fall through from one label to another oh i, I didn't actually put a break i mean there's only one label in here but i think that's what it's complaining about yeah so later on we'll have other sub cases but right now we don't so if we hit play and again we should have valid data in here i'm just saving that i'm gonna hit new world just to blank it out now i'm gonna hit load hmm. i think we might have to go into debug mode here because if i just go debug.log it's going to take a million years to set this Now, presumably, this is actually being called. Load? Yep, tiles is being called. And then we read this. All right, let's go and, uh, let's go and put a debug breakpoint over here. And we are going to uh, debug from the Unity editor. And I think these days, this is all you have to do to do it. So it should be attached, I think, at this point. Let's find out. And we hit load. And there we go. Excellent. So this reader, um, we can follow. Well, mostly we just want to keep track on this. So we're now in debug mode. The program is currently running. So let's find out what happens when we move forward. Do we want to... I'll step over that. That's fine. Um, if I step over this... Yeah, hold on. I want to watch. Click here to end your edge. It's reader.name is what I want to watch. There we go. Tiles. If I step over this, we'll do... Okay, it still goes in here. So that's a title. It's not not equal to that. So we'll go to the next one. I'll grab the attributes X and Y. Uh, which have been set to 0, 0, which is correct for the first one. And then we do want to drop into this, step into. So right now, we are, we've are we got a this, which is a tile tile at the x and y coordinates. Its type is equal to empty, um, which... And I would suspect that reader.get attribute of type will indeed be returning that which is still right. I guess I could break this down into multiple lines and actually see things happening and confirm that it's working. I bet you it is working. And there's something to do with the visuals that isn't. Let's stop debugging. Kill that. Let's, um... If dot type is equal to tile type dot floor debug dot log tile x oh, 
plus y plus is floor. There we go. That won't be quite as spammy in the debug log. So let's try to run this. Equal, equal. There we go. Yeah, we are getting floor tiles. So the tile types are being set correctly. The issue is that the artwork is not updating itself. And I th think it has to do with the order of execution here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what's going on. That is exactly what's going on. It's because... All right, the reason is this. Our map here is getting loaded um, when our during the on enable step because it's in our world controller over here. It's during on enable. How do I um, switch the layout again? There's a way to pop out of the debug looking thing. Like layouts, it's pads, editor to layout, column. Oh, there we go. View. Set me back to, there we go, solution view. Thank you. Um, do, 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 do. Right. So it's on enable that it checks to see if we should load the world, and it creates the world from the save file. And the place where our tile sprites gets updated and gets linked is only in the start that we create the tile for all of our game objects and show them visually. No, that should be okay. Now it sets it to empty sprite. Yeah, that's it exactly. It's setting it to empty sprite here instead of what it actually is. Um, and the callbacks never get called because at this point everything has already changed. So there's two possibilities. Um, one, at this point, is I could grab the appropriate sprite right now. But that's only half the battle. I think what might be better is if we don't load all the... If we don't actually load the file until later, guaranteeing that the world has ticked and every all the controllers have instantiated themselves. That's probably better overall. We do need like the blank world to exist for the controllers to all set up their callbacks. That's an interesting question. Do you create the blank world, then let all the visual stuff create their callbacks, and then actually load in the data, which will trigger all the callbacks? Or, alternatively, do on creation. Oh, that's probably better, actually. Let's, we'll create the sprite and set everything up. And then after, let's manually call the callback on tile changed for this tile data, because we have the tile data. And that will ensure, because it's in on tile change that we go through making sure that um, everything looks right. Is that the simple change that we need to make it work? We'll do the same thing for furniture. Boom. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so the furniture callbacks aren't set up. But there we go. So now, after the world gets... Um, when, when the sprites get created, it automatically runs the on-tile change callback manually because so that it sets it properly. Excellent. Uh, yeah, just get rid of that. So we want the same thing in our furniture sprite controller. Well, or do we? So again, here, at this point, by the time this is running, the, the world map has already been loaded and already has its furniture in there. So we register for a callback now, but we're not going to be told that furniture is created at this point. It's a timing issue. The problem is we want the world object to exist so that we can register for a callback. Huh. Well. Create world from save file. Deserialize. Yeah, this is where it gets created, or this is where it gets created. But this will recreate the world. Um, I guess instead of calling serializer.deserialize, we could create the world ourselves and then manually call world.readxml. 
Because then what we could happen is we could make sure the world exists on enable one way or another. That might be the slickest way. But part of the reason I'm, I want to do it this way is because if we do it, it gives us the opportunity in read XML to have a slightly different setup world that might be more optimal. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I have no idea if you guys are following what I'm saying here. I'm just trying to work out the, the best and cleanest way to handle this timing issue. And the best and clean... Um, we don't know the world size. I can create an empty world ready to go, but it might be the completely wrong size. So I can't just... Well, I mean, I guess I could call the empty constructor. But then here, the tile sprites controller generates the number of sprites that matches the world. The world definitely has to be created and has to be loaded from the save file to have the correct size before start. So, okay, no, the entire world has to be created during the on enable step um, because by the time we run to start, we need to know what the actual true size of the world is. So this manually calling the callback is good. So when furniture sprite controller runs, after it sets up the callback, um, go through all the furniture and um, call the on created event manually. Alternatively, can we delay the callbacks being called in some way? Not really. Go through any uh, existing furniture. So this is like, um, i.e., uh, from a save that was loaded on enable and call the on created event manually. So the one problem is we don't actually have a list of all furniture in the game. Do we have a list of all characters? Yeah, in the world, we do have a list of all characters. Right? Characters here. But what we don't have is a list of all furniture. We have a list of all furniture prototype, but not all furniture, because right now the furniture is always installed in a tile. So we could do some sort of static thing, but I think that would be a bad idea. I think it would make sense, because we might want to do... I think furniture represents something that could, at times, um, be iterated through. Furniture includes things that actually functions, right? Like um, oxygen generators. That's that's a piece of installed furniture. Or a fireplace, or you know, a heating element, or, or, or um, a laser gun. Those are all pieces of furniture that clearly do have to be processed every tick. And we explicitly are not processing tiles on every click. In fact, I don't think we are ever processing tiles. We're simply going to process furniture instead. Therefore, we do actually need a list of all of the furniture in the game. I guess it's furnishings, but I'm going to call them furnitures, even though it's not really Englishy. Furnitures? No, not really, but it'll be okay. Um, so then where we set our characters array, we're just going to create a new list of furniture as well over here. And do we have a global callback for furniture? Yeah, on furniture created. Right, when furniture gets created, we call a callback here. Oh, okay, so this is this is where place furniture happens. So we need to make sure that at this point, um, if we have a furniture object, uh, I should call this fern, actually, like that to make it a little more clear, then furnitures.add fern. I don't think we have an ability to destroy furniture yet, but we'll have to make sure to take it out of this array. Okay, but now we have a global array of all furniture. Uh, it is not currently public. For the sake of argument, let's go ahead and make it public. Maybe we'll want something else later on, but that's going to be okay. Because then it means our furniture sprite controller, we can say, uh, listen, um, for each furniture 
fern in world.furnitures. We're going to manually call our on furniture created fern. That way the sprites will get generated at this point for our furniture. So I think with that, we are now in a position. Now the characters aren't in there yet. Um, if we hit load. Oops. Okay, so no go. But why? If I tell you to build a wall over here. Oh, oh, derp, 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 derp. Okay, <laughs> it's because we're not saving the furniture info yet. We only save the floor tiles. Everything I just did, we had to do. But there's not actually any walls being saved yet. I think we've got time to do that. Um, so in our tiles, which is where we really, well, here's where it comes down to, right? I was talking about that um, earlier in our structure, I think in the previous video. I said we've got a couple of possibilities because we could sort this like this, where inside of this, we have the furniture, etc. right? And then close that. So the furniture could be in our save file within our tile, or instead of that, we could have over here as a separate group, furnitures like this, especially now that we've got a global parameter and then it's got a bunch of things inside. I'm actually going to go ahead and do this second one. And the reason I'm doing this second one is because if we decide to restructure our tiles, just be a, a sort of um, a, a map, basically, you know, just some a byte map of some kind uh, to minimize how much space this takes, then this will already be in a correct location to support that. And I think that's going to be a perfectly fine way of doing it. So back to our world then. When we go and scroll all the way down to the file saving, so the same code that writes all the tiles, we're going to make another pass of that, call it furnitures and a furniture node. And we're going to loop through oops, for each furniture fern in furnitures. We're going to loop through. No, uh, no, uh, no. And Obviously, we're going to be calling fern dot write XML to the writer. Where did I go? Boom, like that. So we'll have a block now. Right now, furniture doesn't um, doesn't implement all that stuff. So we'll have to do it. That's going to be pretty easy. And luckily, this really is the sort of thing we mostly only have to worry about setting up once. If we do add a new parameter to something, then we will have to go and um, and tune it and, you know, make sure that it's it's writing it out and reading it incorrectly. But it's actually not going to take that. It's not going to happen that often. So it's going to be good. Do we have, how do we instantiate furniture? We have a protected instantiator of furniture. Why is that? Who calls you? Oh, it's when we're creating the prototypes. Okay, it will have to be public for us to um, be serializable. Again, it's kind of annoying, but hardly the end of the world. So we'll just copy this from the tile. Get that going on there. And then what attributes are we writing? Mostly um, just the object type string. I guess the, the movement cost would be good. And then it'll be width and, and height and all those things. But for now, for now, all we are writing is the object type and the movement cost. This is the only data that does anything. Get those in there. You and the movement cost. You. And there's no type. <clears throat> Hang on, what is our tile? Oh yeah, it doesn't have to read the, the X and Y, that's fine, okay. Um, and then for the writing, or for the reading, we grab this, which is just a string, so we can get it directly. And then, oops, I shouldn't have kept it, gotten rid of it completely, because we are gonna need to be able to parse an integer, which is the movement cost. Right, and the movement cost is something settable and everything. Yeah, protected set, which is fine. So, 
now, so tile's not going to produce or er, process its own furniture. It's not going to care about that. So that the world's going to do a big block for it. This should no longer be generating an error. Just got to, here, hit F8, recompile. Ah, furniture does not contain a definition for write XML. But yes, it does. It totally does. It's in here. It's been saved. Do I have to compile this page? Eh? Uh? Does not contain... But it does, though. It's right here. I'm in furniture. Furniture has a right XML. No extension method. What did I done goof? It's public? Right, let me close all this a second. Make sure that the saves are actually in there. And I haven't gone quite crazy. Alright, let me comment this out. So that the code actually compiles here. Uncomment it out. Oh! Oh! I spelt it wrong! Oh, alright. There, I had everything in caps. The, the capital M, the capital L. Sorry, guys. Hit play. So, we need to regenerate the map, save it, which should now be outputting the furniture information. New world, load. Hmm. Okay. So two questions. Is it saving the furniture? Let's see. World. Oh, yes. It's writing the furniture. It's not reading it. So we want a case over here for read furnitures. So presumably the save file has it. Furnitures. And then copy this. Bum, bum. Furnitures. So then we read it. If it's not equal to furniture, then we bail. Um, when we output this, we actually do need an X and Y coordinate because that's the tile where the, the stuff gets set. Mm -hmm. um, X, Y, tile.x. Tile.y. These are all attribute bits, but I think that's okay. Um, get attribute x and y. Because how do we place furniture? Well, world, well, that's, which is this, has a place furniture command, which needs an object type and a tile. And that's really all we're going to do. In fact, I'm not sure that the furniture needs to read XML. This actually literally might be unused. Debug.log error, uh, which is furniture read XML unused. This should not run because what can happen here is instead of reading any XML like and if passing it on to any like child at that point, which means really over when we, where do we actually write the files? Like right here, we can actually just write our own code, but okay, so we're gonna get X, Y. Um, oh, well, that's an interesting question. Cause here's what I was gonna do. I was gonna say place furniture, um, which is going to be reader get attribute object type. And it's got to be placed at a tile, so we go tiles x, y. And what it will do is it will look up the furniture prototype of that name. Um, and place furniture, does place furniture return anything? No, it feels like it should. Doesn't it? I think it should. It should return the furniture that gets created, just for the sake of argument. 
return null. Over here, and then here, return the furniture. I think I like that. Furniture fern equals that. Because the movement cost could still get set up. Um, and I guess then in that case, then saying read XML. So at that point, the furniture has been placed in the correct place. It's been assigned to the tile, all these things, which is great. So I guess it can go ahead and read it just in case there's anything else. Um, but it doesn't need the object type. It just needs the movement cost. Um, X, Y, and object type have already been set. And we should already be assigned to a tile. So just read extra data. So if the movement cost for some reason has been customized by something, or if there's damage, like if we have hit points on our furniture and it's starting to become damaged, we'll want to read it at that point. But other than that, it's already basically been created and it gets placed the same way as if it was built, um, if it had just finished construction, which uh, might lead to funny sound effects or something. We'll take a look at that going forward. So. Uh, read XML reader. Write attribute string string. Oh, um, dot to string. And that. Anything else? Furniture is required for return value. Oh, place furniture. Uh, return null. And hit play. And pathfinding save, just to make sure that's good. New world, blank it all out, and hit load. Wow! Okay. Not a surprise that there's an error. Oops. Hmm. Object not set. So place instance. Where do we create the prototypes? Are we getting a... Um... No, the prototype should exist at that point. So what's not set to an instance of the object? this point. Well, we know t is not null, and we know t.furniture is not null. The callback, there we go. At this point, it doesn't have a callback set, and we're trying to call it. And not equals null. There we go. So we're going to grab that and apply it there, there, and there. So we don't have a callback yet on the furniture. It's trying to update neighbors and stuff. Hey, hey, look at that. We have loaded the world. The data is correct. The tiles are correct. Booyah. We are not saving character information at this point. That would be the next step. Because really, when we save, say we hit save now, we want to save the fact our character is there. If we load, it's putting our character back at his original position. But look, it's updating our changes! Holy crap. Um, so we can say something like, um, hi. Save. And then we can exit, hit play, hit load. Hi is in there. OK, excellent. That's working really well right now. We're not saving the character info. I will try to cram that in here rather than uh, put another cut um, because it's actually going to be pretty straightforward um, because we can do exactly what we're doing with the furniture, but we can have characters and character and character um, C. Can't go car because of um, you know, it's a reserve word. Um, character, there it is, characters. And we see c.writeXML, da da da, although it doesn't implement that yet. Um, so we mostly just 
character. And we're once again going to grab this. Is this the last thing that's a piece of data in our character? I think it actually might be. And tell it that it's going to implement that. And then we are, oh, do you have a default constructor? Um, it sets itself to a tile, so we will have to go and set, which really doesn't make any sense normally. You know, use only for seriali serialization. Otherwise, horrible things will happen. I mean, we'll find out right away that it's broken because it's going to try to do movement and its current tile is going to be set to null and then it'll realize that something is not quite right. And then we get the, tile sa or the file saving at the bottom. Um, so what are we going to do? We are going to... This is my character. Do I not have a tile? Oh, it's called cur tile on a character. Cur tile. We aren't going to save job info right now. That will wait until um, the future. So between loading and saving, jobs are currently going to get reset, but we'll uh, make do with that. Um, do we need to save anything other right now other than our current coordinate? No, I mean, if speed changes for any reason, but it, right now it's not. So really, all we have to do right now is set the X and Y. And we'll have a read over here, but right now it's not going to do anything because... Okay, right XML is there. And then same thing here for characters. We're going to have a characters. And the furniture... We're going to grab that X and Y out of there, and then character C equals um, new character, and we assign a tile at X and Y. And then we go ahead and tell it that it can read the XML for any other parameters. And that's that. So this should recreate our characters. And in fact, where do we create the character right now? Create character. Where does this run? Probably in the setup. Eh? Go to declaration. No, not declaration. Find references. Oh, yeah, we don't want that. Right now we're creating the character in the character sprite controller, which is definitely not the right place for anything like that. So where are we going to create the character? Well, in our world code for sure, um, either if we're creating an empty world, create empty, eh? oh, it's in our constructor. So we set up the world, we get our characters array. If this version, um, yeah, uh, creates an empty world. And then um, uh, make one character. So we create a character over there. And the characters centered. So there's going to be that. But when we load, so now because we took out the character creation code from our character sprite controller, when we load a map, a dummy character will no longer be created. Um, instead, it will correctly create a character from the save file. Now, right now, the character was not being saved. So if we hit play, oops, what did I do? For character C in characters. Okay, if we hit play, the empty map should still have its normal character, same as before. Or maybe nothing will happen. Mm, why? Um, where's the uh, document outliner? U pads. Document outline. Thank you very much. Um, 
Should this not be running here? Debug.log, create character like that. And actually, I just realized in my thing over here, we don't want to create new character. We want to call create character and feed it a tile. That way it ensures that it gets put the right thing. But that's not what the current problem is. Uh, if I hit play, oops. Uh, oh. There we go. If we hit play, we get empty world. Create character runs, but then... Oh, I think it's a timing issue. Right. Right, right, right. Um, it's got to be the same thing as the furniture. So what we have to do is we have to make this list public. And same thing here. After we instantiate everything and set up our thing, um, check for pre-existing characters, which didn't, which won't do the callback. So um, for each character C in world dot characters, we say uh, on character created C like that. So we just couldn't see it before. If we hit play, now we get our empty world there. If we hit pathfinding test, we get an environment for him to walk around. If we say build a wall over there, you will go over there, and then you're out of position. We're gonna save. Then I'll quit out just for the sake of argument here. And if we load, our one character is way over there. Perfect. So the wall, the, the jobs don't get saved. Um, I'm trying to debate whether I want to include them in the save file right now. I don't think so because I think that the job structure is going to change. But we do have file saving and loading in here now. Um, if I go and say, tell you to build a wall over here now. But then I hit load. You're going to be back over there and no walls because I didn't actually save those changes. Excellent. File saving and loading. Um, again, there's a lot of different approaches. Um, I'm not going to say that this one is necessarily the best overall, although any approach for saving you take is really going to be a question of um, matching the saving technique to the, your particular application. This should work out pretty well. Again, in the future, we will change it so that when you hit save, it actually brings up a dialog box to ask you a file name. We'll actually create a file and then we'll put it there. But for now, this is going to be perfectly sufficient. Really happy about that. We are going to get job saving in the future, but I think we've already talked multiple times, or I've already talked multiple times, that the job situation is going to change. I think it's going to wait. It's going to get completely refactored once we implement sort of rooms. And... Um, and therefore, I don't want to uh, overkill how much uh, work we're putting into our job saving quite yet. Rooms will shake things up pretty dramatically anyway. But there we go. So we got a bunch of file saving in there. And each one of these little file uh, functions is actually really, really, really simple and straightforward. In fact, we could even uh, decide to break up the tile furniture and characters things into sub functions. But the reading, you can see, it's like it's quite clear what's going on. And I think every single one of these is very clear and easy to understand. And the fact that that's the case means we probably ultimately did a pretty good approach because it's very easy to see exactly what's what. And again, the bonus of all this is our file is in plain text. It's going to look like this. Um, and therefore, it's going to be easy to check things out, to debug things, and to see exactly what has happened along the way. So I uh, hope this uh, this was helpful and clear and good. I'm not sure what our next step will be. Um, I think it might be, I think we'll actually implement doors, I suspect, and then start working on the room code, um, and then move on from there. And at some point, um, animations of furniture and different things like that. But that's that's still coming. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Thank you very much to all our January supporters over at patreon.com slash quill18creates and these mic check supporters. We've got Alexander Gutler, Andre Odendal, Neil Blakely Milner, Speedy Savant, Valiant Cake Fiend, Aaron Toyson, Marius Field Vold, Disco Geek, Ole Peter Talgo, Julian Auger Lafont, or Auger Lafont, I should say, Stephen Stagger, Michael McClintock, Kale the Quick, Drazion, Wes Oldenboving, Craig Mortel, Nail or Nale, I don't know, Vickstrom, and Andrew Henninger, and everyone who has watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed to these videos, and left comments as well. You guys really keep things going. Thank you very much for watching.